Hello there, so my first Osu mapping video was made on request. Someone wanted mappers to explain how they map, and I sort of did that. Rather than combing through one of my own maps and talking about each decision, I generalized how to structure a map and carried on making weekly videos about various parts of map design. I figured that learning the details would be useless if a viewer didn't see the bigger picture yet. I still do believe that, however, it was a bit short-sighted to think that explaining my mapping choices would be a complete waste of time. Learning to map requires practice. I could explain why objects form a pattern and any new mapper could understand my reasoning, but a new mapper probably wouldn't come to the same conclusion in their own map. They'd be lost with a million different possibilities in their heads and no idea of what works or what doesn't, resulting in the random object spam that is most amateur mapping. More generally speaking, a tutorial is nice, but if it's not a step-by-step -step thing, you won't know exactly exactly how to apply it. This is a major problem for mapping because every song is unique. No tutorial can cover every scenario. New mappers are left to make judgments on their own, and without repeated practice interpreting music into objects, they end up failing. Which is where this absurdly long video comes in. Usually I talk about maps after the fact, dissecting why decisions were made and how they relate to music. In this video though, we're going to take a more practical standpoint. I recorded myself creating a map from start to finish, and I'm going to walk through my thought process along the way, including all of this stuff. By doing so, you'll hopefully have a better idea of how to apply certain mapping concepts, as well as knowledge of how I personally choose to map. Of course, this doesn't come without its downsides. This video isn't for everyone. It's too long, frankly not entertaining, and you may already understand parts of the map without explanations, but that's kind of the point. By looking at the creation process of this map in detail, you'll know more situations in which concepts apply, and you may be more well suited to stick those ideas into your own maps as well. Think of this like a hyper-detailed mapping livestream. I can't tell you how many times I've seen mapping livestreams and learned something simple that made its way into my future maps. Hanser, for example, explained how he likes to align circles with the bodies of sliders during a stream once. A super simple idea, but at the time I hadn't really thought about it, and for the last few years I've been doing this in pretty much every map of mine. So this video is really just for those who want to go through the struggle of learning how to map, and through my perspective in this case. If you did want to get real practice out of this video though, you could try replicating the map on your own as I go through it. The finished map is in the description, so you can make a new difficulty and try to follow along with each object placed. I don't have scientific proof or anything, but I feel it could make mapping easier to understand if you're legitimately doing it and understanding the reasons why. That's only if you're really dedicated though. Anyway, enough dawdling, let's map. Part 1, Setup. Yeah, we're starting this far back, because this is where my map's planning begins. Starting in song setup, I filled in some placeholder metadata, then immediately moved on to the actually important difficulty settings. Circle size helps dictate how a map can be structured, and changing circle size after designing part of a map isn't smart, so I needed to make a solid decision even before I started mapping. There were two factors I considered, what rhythm and intensity of mapping the song supported, and what kind of map I wanted to make. I heard the song before starting the map, obviously, but for your sake, here's what it sounds like in different sections. It's a relatively slow, remixed anime opening. Fantastic. From what I heard, the song was around 130 BPM with a lot of fourth beat sounds. Most of those fourth beat sounds weren't very strong though, they were either vocals or hi-hats, and the only really strong sounds were on each downbeat. Based on that, the most intense thing I felt this song could support was something in between ordinary mapping and double BPM mapping. Like, one-fourth jumps in places could work, but no back-to-back -back jumps, nor continuous one-fourth filler rhythm. That said, I chose CS3 because large circle sizes make 1 4th jumps more manageable, and I wanted to make a fun map. The rest of my settings aren't really worth getting into. I chose HP Drain 6, Approach Rate 9, and Overall Difficulty 8. Those could very easily replace the default settings for insane difficulties, though I guess it's worth noting that my approach rate is high compared to ordinary 130 BPM maps. Next came timing. I think most people tap out timing or find it automatically in a program, but I find it easier to just place a timing point and adjust from there. My guess of 130 was apparently wrong, but the actual BPM was 128, so I was pretty close. At this point, I could finally start mapping, but I prepped it a little more instead. First, I added a keyboard overlay so my shortcut usage would be more clear to you. It's cute, right? They're little buttons. Second, I added a background. Default background is kind of boring to look at. And third, I added bookmarks at the start of each major change in the music. These helped me understand the structure of the song better, which correlated to how each section would be organized through mapping. Part 2. Mapping. 
the intro. Things get real now. I listened to the song's four measure intro for about 15 seconds and grasped what was important. Here's what I took away from that, visualized in circles. Drums repeated triples for three measures, while the fourth measure covered the same sounds with record scratching. There were bass kicks and snare drums for the first two measures, then only bass kicks and one snare at the end. There was also this long held sound starting on these ticks, in Anime Girl here, and complete silence at the end, followed by this sample. Yeah. Along with those rhythms was a clear progression from only high frequencies to a mix of highs and lows, a buildup of intensity. With that in mind, I decided I would separate the map by each rhythmically repeated segment. They'd each be mapped with the same rhythm, but also gradual slider velocity and spacing increases to show the buildup. So the first step in doing that would be setting up slider velocity. I started by pressing F6 to place a green line, but realized I hadn't set base slider velocity yet. That's this thing here. Exactly one or two are my go-tos usually because I've got a mental image for how fast a slider is based on its velocity number. I then placed an SV multiplier of 0.5 from which I would build up and started placing objects. A slider first seemed like a good choice because if I were going to repeat a rhythm multiple times with increasing intensity, the increase in slider velocity would easily show that. Full beat long slider seemed okay in my head, but after testing, I opted for more dense rhythm through a half beat slider. I also backed off from the curved slider because generally, straight sliders feel more neutral and curved ones feel more engaging. Being the start of the buildup, I imagined I could contrast the two by starting with straight sliders and moving on to curved ones later. And as for the angle of the slider, about 5 degree tilts are what I find visually appealing. Nothing more than that. A circle came next because I wanted to map the hi-hat triple. It's spaced away from the slider for the reasons explained when deciding circle size. I was going to use overall high spacing, even for a stream-like rhythm. It's also in line with Object 1's body because I didn't want movement to be too erratic, like it would be over here or over here. And lastly, its spacing from the tail of one is generally what I planned on using for the whole map's visual spacing as well. I'll explain more about that as we go on. What was the point of that slider? I was thinking about making the gimmick of this map sliders that overlap each other. I attempted it on another map recently and never finished it, but I still thought it was cool. I decided against it in this situation though because I just didn't like how it looked. Instead of placing more objects without any progress, I decided to establish slider velocities for the whole intro, ensuring the gradual increase matched the song's buildup. This involved placing multipliers on each repeated segment, the first four being 0.15 times increases. I also double checked if these were the slider speeds I wanted by placing sliders along the way. They were just for reference. When the repeated segments got closer together, I increased SV by 0.1 times each, but realized that was a bit too fast, so lowered it to 0.05 times each instead. At the record scratch part, I increased in, uh, weird intervals. Plus 0.15 times each red tick, and minus 0.5 times from that on the following white tick. This was for a weird rhythm I'd planned, which I'll talk about later, though the precision was honestly unnecessary. Next was a lot of failed experimentation. This happens all the time when I open a new map. I didn't know exactly how I'd start the map still, so I tried out some weird overlaps and stuff before finally sticking to one main pattern, which has curves temporarily. The idea behind this pattern is to have a jump to the strong white tick sound and make the rest of the triple feel slow. And that's what the song does with its quiet hi-hat sounds, contrasted with a strong snare hit. Placement-wise, 3 is below 1 and 2 because these fast 1 4 jumps feel more natural to me with downward movement. Sounds silly, but I don't know, it might be true. Maybe Maybe it has something to do with how we move our hands closer to our bodies more easily. I've got no science to back it up, but it feels right. Also, sliders are flipped because symmetry looks nice, and they're this far apart because of visual spacing plans. After this, I uh, set some combo colors because my default ones are ugly, and continued mapping for the rest of the section. I wanted to map the same rhythm with just more intensity, so I copied and pasted my first pattern after moving three down slightly for smoother movement. All the rotation stuff you're seeing here was unnecessary. What I wanted was a 90 degree rotation with 1 and 3 switched, which I eventually achieved through manual means. By doing this, I essentially had one vertical and one horizontal version of my pattern, which I'd be reusing in the next measure. At this point, I reassessed my patterns. Curves were removed for the buildup reasons, and spacing between combos was eliminated in favor of a stack. Mixing 1 fourth and 1 half rhythms with similar spacing sucked for reading and gameplay. 
With the stack here now, I also chose to avoid exact 90 degree angles between consecutive sliders. Considering each slider is at a 5 degree angle already, I've got two sliders I can use for either vertical or horizontal movement at any time, and going with this angle looks a bit more natural than the blocky 90 degree one. You'll notice I favor this kind of placement a lot. You can also see that I recopied and pasted this slider because I knew it wasn't at exactly the right angle. Precision that nobody will ever notice. It's great, I know. I noticed that there was a bit of bass coming in on slider 3, so I decided that this would be the start of the curves. For the most part, my curves follow the same ideas behind my straight lines. They're at about 5 degree angles from being perfectly horizontal or vertical. After forming the next copy of that pattern, I made a mistake. For consistency's sake, the next object needed to be stacked under the green slider's end while moving horizontally, but that would result in either an overlap with 2 or movement off screen. To solve this, I tried moving stuff around and realized it wouldn't work, then decided to just stack the blue and green combos. They were previously spaced apart because I thought the rhythm would be understandable by that point, but stacking wasn't bad in the first place. I then moved everything over towards the right to give myself more room to expand leftwards, and manually recreated the same pattern one more time. The song changed here, so obviously my mapping did too. The curved slider no longer follows that 5 degree rotation idea, and I copied and pasted it 4 times with 30 degree rotations each to show that they were essentially the same thing grouped together. The song repeating itself here made that seem pretty justified. Not much thought behind the placements themselves though. I thought the stacking with 2 here looked alright, so I repeated the same angle between each repetition. Before I forget, I should also mention that new combos here are representing each repeated segment. That's why they're half as long now compared to the start. Also, another universal thing, these circles after sliders are always on the inside of the curve. Going on the outside is a kind of gameplay I wasn't really going for, so they're all consistently like this. Using 1 8 snap interval is not recommended unless you are a very experienced beat mapper. Time for that weird rhythm I hinted at. Taken directly from YFBMP's map of this remix's original song, I used a 3 8 slider followed by a 1 4 slider for these weird record scratches. Weird rhythm for a weird part of the song. Makes sense, right? For placements, I indecisively thought about straight or red anchor sliders, then focused on positioning instead. Symmetry with the head of the previous slider seems alright, and so I did that, just with the finalized red anchor slider instead. Similarly, I pondered slider type for the record scratch and decided on a curve in the end. I don't want to associate 1 and 2 with similar shapes because they're expressing really different sounds. Notice how spacing between these is smaller than any of the 1 4th before. This is supposed to make rhythm a little more intuitive, since I don't want people thinking this is a 1 half slider. Also unrelated, these don't smoothly move into each other because, again, record scratch sounds weird and supports a weird gameplay. This repeats again, but the record scratch is even louder, so I horizontally flip the original pattern and show the change in the record scratch with a vertical flip. Minor, but I think it's okay as a really slight contrast between the combos. As you can tell, this part is, uh, special. There's a cute anime girl noise at the end of the first slider and the dude afterwards in complete silence. This resulted in some possibly controversial rhythm choice on my end. First, the not controversial part, I rotated this slider 90 degrees from the last one because I wanted it to be slightly different from the previous two. Second, actually controversial, I used a circle followed by a blue tick 1 4th slider. This makes for a strong sound on the tail of 3 and a weak one in the head, which is a no-no for basic mapping. It feels really awkward, and the point of it was to be awkward because, as the following sound sample indicates, something about mapping should be special here. So yeah, that pretty much covered the intro. I tested the map and confirmed it played as I wanted, which I'll let you see now. Yeah. For the sake of time, I'll be ignoring all the hit sounding related stuff I do here. I feel it's like a completely different topic, honestly. At this point, it's worth looking at visual spacing. One of the easiest way to unify objects on a map and make everything look more coherent is through nearby association. If objects are close to each other, making them a single distance apart works great for that, and literally every object on my map follows that concept. Everything is connected unless there's a solid reason not to. You'll see a few of those down the line. 
For the next five minutes, I did nothing. I tried to do stuff, just no success. This happens all the time. I attempt mapping something and test out a few different ideas, but nothing sticks. No matter the rhythm or arrangement, it feels wrong and I can't find any alternatives. When these mapping blocks hit early on, I just try to skip to somewhere else in the song and come back to it later. Having a better understanding of how the whole map looks can give me more ideas, and eventually that did work out. Part 3, Mapping the Verse, or uh, some other musical term, I don't know. At the next bookmark, the song calmed down quite a bit. Vocals were the melody with a somewhat weird rhythm, and percussion remained essentially the same as before. Weak hi-hat triples with alternating strong kicks and snares. Because that repeated itself multiple times, I varied on some of the intro's mapping ideas when designing everything in this section. That began with slider velocity. Along with the pitches of the vocals, I raised and lowered slider velocity every two beats. It started at 0.75 times, then up to 0.85 times, back down to 0.75 times, and up again to 0.95 times. At the part here where vocals switch up their rhythm, I gradually increased SV by 0.05 times each beat, which again lined up with vocal pitches. That same huge chunk of music repeated again, though I waited to add green lines there until after mapping instead. So back to the objects here, I added some before placing all those green lines. The first two circles are stacked because they're both representing single vocals, while the next object is spaced away because there's a drum impact. That next object is a straight slider following the basic aesthetic principle all my straight sliders so far have, 5 degree angles. Unlike in the intro, the circle after the slider isn't overlapped. There's a vocal syllable here, while the blue ticks in the intro were just hi-hats, so this spacing serves to differentiate the two patterns. Like my very, very first objects, these are also arranged so that one leads into two smoothly, and there's a downwards drop onto three. Three is also underneath one because I still wanted to implement that overlapping objects gimmick from the beginning as well, and I figured it could work okay in this section. With object four being a one-fourth slider, the next objects could be far away, so the pattern could be repeated while still being clean. When placing 4, I also chose to change my stack leniency. Having multiple stack differences looks really ugly, so directly overlapping 3 and 4 was the best choice here. And some final notes about visuals. 2 and 4 are symmetrical, makes a whole pattern look less random in my opinion. All overlaps like this are also at 45 degree angles. Not just this pattern, but it makes a whole map look more unified. Lastly, these sliders are mirrored and resized with the scale tool. Makes them look as precise as possible, and I like that. Fast forward a few minutes while I do all those SV changes, blah, blah blah blah, and we're back to mapping again. Building off the intro slider shape usage, I decided to use curves on the higher pitched, higher slider velocity phrases. Out of a desire to make everything connected, I almost unconsciously form little triangles wherever I can, but in this case, I ended up changing it after seeing that this pattern wouldn't work. Again, like the previous combo, I had two spaced and three underneath one's tail, but knowing I needed a one fourth slider underneath three meant things were gonna get messy. The playback speed slowdown here was to see if I could weed my way out of this situation by using a different rhythm, which I tried after adjusting placements, but I decided two circles were too intense, both spaced apart and spaced together. Forgetting about the triangle was the only option at that point, so I lowered it and made room for a new slider. This minor adjustment was because, again, I feel like super fast vertical movement is more comfortable than horizontal movement. With the new slider in place, I moved everything again to make a blanket of sorts and flipped the whole thing? Honestly, there wasn't anything wrong with the original setup, I just wanted to map from lower to higher because pitches make that feel more correct. It's not really important. Related, the next slider faced downwards because of the pitch change. It was also at a 5 degree angle, but again, not at a 90 degree angle relative to the previous slider. With that in mind, I replaced the slider with a properly rotated copy of the first one here, and placed those two circles in the same fashion I have so far. The following short slider then forced me to reconsider my placement of two. The overlap sucked, placement down here connected objects, but didn't match the cursor movement I'd been doing so far. Up here was worse for the same reasons, yet over here seemed okay. It was symmetrical with one's body and made for some slick circular movement, which usually the patterns up until now had as well. Moving the whole chunk to the left next was necessary for placing the following object on the right of the playfield. As should be expected, it was a curved slider that I just copied, flipped, and resized directly from the previous. Visually, I decided on another triangle here, which just so happened to allow another smaller triangle below, really satisfying my need for cute arrangements. Something to note about these four short combos, they all have nearly the same movement. This song repeats itself, so I express that in movement, and this will come into play when mapping the second half of this section too. 
Anyway, the vocals change to just notes on each white tick, so I prepared for that by leading into it with a circle, as opposed to a 1 4 slider. Stacking felt a bit too much like the previous patterns, which led me to place this pretty far away. If not for the spaced 1 4 immediately preceding this, I'd say the spacing was too large, but differentiating the two rhythms took precedence in this situation, I think. The next object was stacked because continuous large jumps would be weird moving into a calmer vocal sound, and the slider is a 5 degree vertical one because the previous slider was essentially horizontal. I think of this and this as like the same sort of thing. You know what I mean? Closing in on the song here, we've got a vocal pitch increase on each white tick. No more blue tick vocal, so no more space circle. More generally though, repeated rhythm covers that pitch increase stuff well enough, which is why I copied and pasted the combo above, but then I thought about using a 3 4 slider instead of copying the same thing again. I was thinking of YF's difficulty here, and that's a rhythm he used, but it wasn't very fitting. Placement wise, it looked okay with the tail hugging the previous slider and a triangle formed when copying and pasting the slider again. It just didn't make sense rhythmically. My mapping was supposed to get more intense along with SV increases, not less, which is what the lower rhythm density here ruined. So I deleted those and replaced them with one half sliders, still keeping with the curve that I previously used on increasing pitches. Overall, I wasn't satisfied with this either, mostly because of the awkward snapping movement it required, so I adjusted it to build from the bottom of the screen to the top instead. This involved rotating the first slider to be the opposite tilt of the previous slider, and connecting it to 2 and 3 with a perfectly straight line. Any random angle when this close would look kinda wrong to me, sorta like almost correct visual spacing. The slider afterwards was again copied, pasted, and flipped, at which point I readjusted the circle here from above the slider to below it. Simple reason, the angle would be just a tiny bit sharper, and therefore easier to aim. This also let me connect each combo with this sort of symmetry, which you've been seeing me do all the time thus far. You should have been able to predict the next two combos. Same rhythm, curves this time because pitch increase blah blah blah, and placements still follow the same connecting principle as the previous. Vocals change again on the next white ticks, so I tried to throw that with a different design. Initially, I tried on a one half slider, but that blended too much with the previous ones, so I went with a circle followed by a one fourth slider instead. That allowed for clicking on each vocal and varied enough to show the difference in the song. Two circles could work, but I felt like that wasn't rhythmically dense enough for the song after covering so much one fourth. Shouldn't need me to describe the slider design here either. More of the same angle, more flipping. Vocals change a bit here, but I chose to make the next object a circle again because I knew I'd be involving clicking on the red tick hence the green line I placed. Another triangle seemed okay, though one like this, nah, nah. Everything needs that 5 degree tilt, a noticeable polygons included, so I moved my second slider down a bit and made room for a tilted triangle. I realize how stupid that sounds, but I notice it, it bugs me. We got three strong sounds here, so three consecutive space circles seems like the best way to show that compared to other triples so far. Other triples being those jumping from slider ends, the stacked vocal ones, and the blue tick emphasis ones. Unlimited possibilities here. I could have gone with a wide angle, a perfect triangle, or a straight line. The last of those played alright, so I continued mapping, but something about it kept nagging at me. This is the climax of the phrase pretty much, and it does have a contextually unique pattern, but it's not very interesting. Maybe an overlap would be? No, it wasn't. Something that effectively linked with the previous objects came into my head though. A triangle repeating the same tail locations of the previous objects, reinforcing that triangle pattern I initially made. This was cooler, so I lowered spacing, adjusted for the tilt, and made it work. If you're wondering why I switched 3 and 4 around, it's because reversing rotation after a pause is more natural, and natural movement is kind of important for something straining like a space triple. Just like at the start of this section, I led into the halfway point with this stack following vocals. Placement wise, it's symmetrical with the triangle because that both looks good and plays comfortably. Before mapping more, I ended up changing the comboing around here too. The triple was a focus, so giving it its own combo fit best, and having a new combo on each white tick would end up being overkill. Slider velocity adjustments for the upcoming 8 seconds of the map were my next task. For the most part, they were the same as what I just mapped, but the ending climax was a bit different, so I left that untouched for the time being. Given the song here was nearly the same as the previous 8 seconds though, I used nearly the same patterns throughout. This started with the same first slider, just flipped around because I didn't want it to be the exact same. For the sake of neatness, I also moved things down and kept visual spacing with these objects that weren't even on screen anymore. Completely unnecessary, but connecting all these white after images makes it feel like my map's a bit more organized, and I like that. 
I'll be sparing you from the extremely minor details in the second half of this section because they're essentially the same as the first. We got the two circles, the 45 degree overlap gimmick, the one fourth slider created by scaling flipping the one half slider, and they're connected by a pseudo blanket sort of thing. The next slider is a curve because pitch and SV increase in concept. There's another blanket to arrange these, allowing for circular movement within the combo. Note that I likely wouldn't make this a blanket if it didn't connect with 4 as well though. Blankets for the sake of blankets are one of the lamest ways to connect objects in my opinion, mostly because I associate that with inexperienced maps, my own included. Another straight slider next copied from the original and placed at a non 90 degree angle from the previous slider. Same setup for the next three objects. And lastly, another curved slider forming a line with a lone circle. Making this also led me to check the previous one where I noticed and polished my poor line connecting each object. Thank you follow points for making linear inconsistencies obvious. Remember how I said that earlier part was entirely circular movement? The only differences in the song here are the two vocals on each one fourth slider. Instead of being the same circular movement between each combo, they switch every time. It's a cool way to show a slight difference in my opinion, even if it isn't in your face like clickable rhythm changes would be. Moving on, the build up here was the same as the one a few seconds prior, so I used essentially the same idea. First slider was straight, but vertical this time, opposite the tilt of these circles. The circle underneath was put on the right side, so I could have a sharper angle moving into the left, and that copied combo was aligned with the center of the previous slider. Something you may have seen me do a few times now is manually scale sliders to the proper slider velocity by touching their anchors, but the more precise way to do that is by using the scale tool. This isn't as elegant with curves, but straight sliders can be scaled in place according to their head position, which is why I reversed this one, scaled, then reversed back. Proper length while still being the right distance from the circle. Rather than having four consecutive white tick vocals, there's now two followed by half beat vocals. This meant a circle and a fourth beat slider like earlier could work, though now with curves to sort of replicate what was done with the last build up. I struggled to think of good placements for these at first. If standalone, I would make it look something like this to show more progression towards one direction, but the stream afterwards complicated that. There is potential for a nine object stream with these, uh, oriental sounds? Y you know, this sound. They're the same sound backing that important triple earlier. Forming an isometric grid seemed like an okay way to show that, but it wasn't very special, nor was it reasonable difficulty wise. It was way too hard. I had a few other options though. Pitches of the sounds were decreasing and the song was going even calmer in the next section, so gradually lowering spacing seemed appropriate. I imagined how a spiral stream would look with the slider here, then tried creating that by lowering distance spacing by 0.1 each object, however that ended up being too spaced out and I scrapped it. Lowering by 0.2 times each object was more spirally, but it still looked like a jumble of random circles. New combos couldn't save it either, so I went with a simpler wave shape instead. I don't know how many other rappers do this, but when making streams that scale up or down gradually, tracing a slider body works pretty well. If this were an option in the slider to stream command, that would be way nicer though. With my stream looking good, I worked on the next few objects. The song drops intensity a huge amount over these next three beats while playing the same rhythm, so slider velocity again was going to be my way of showing that. Contrast is important in this kind of scenario. If you've ever played music, think of it like a forte piano crescendo. You gotta start really strong to make the softer sound even more meaningful. In this case, I increased slider velocity for the initial slider, even though it's technically weaker than the stuff prior. This allowed me to use a relatively slower slider velocity for the following sliders that have more impact. Those sliders were designed a bit later though. I wanted to form some sort of fanning out pattern, but I was already at the edge of the screen, so things needed to be moved. And moving them made spacing the stream a bit too high, resulting in even more stuff moving around. Eventually I landed on this pattern, negative 30 degree rotations steadily moving downwards. This was okay, but I felt it was a bit more highly spaced than what the song deserved. I scratched that and tried a closer together pattern, but realized I didn't have enough room for four consecutive objects, so I had to go with something else. More horizontal flipping looked nice, but it was overdone by this point. It was sort of like, these flipping patterns are my generic section stuff, and I want to use stuff that contrasts with that in more special sections of the song. With one more big rotation and readjustment of everything, I made a decent negative 20 degree fanning movement. 
So something I haven't explicitly mentioned that you probably caught on to by now. Most of my new combos are in white ticks. Big white ones especially, or subdivisions of two or four within a measure. Songs are structured to emphasize these sounds, so my combos are arranged accordingly, but in this situation I was better off placing the new combo after the big white tick. That's because this whole group is representing the intensity decline, while the orange new combo signifies the start of a new vocal phrase. Part 3. Mapping the Low Pass Filter that vocal phrase was pretty uninteresting. It's just half beat notes over and over again. Pairing that with the low pass filter that I mistakenly called distortion in another video, using super low spacing circles near the bottom of the screen fit appropriately. I tried to make small groupings of overlap circles separated by major downbeats, with a few sliders thrown in whenever there were gaps in vocals. Everything looked like garbage. Just like that part after the intro, nothing I did felt right. However, I didn't skip ahead to map something else this time. Instead, I scrapped 5 minutes of poor mapping attempts and mapped the section with perfectly overlapping objects separated into shorter groups. The logic behind these groupings was a bit different than before. Groupings of two would make the most sense because each white tick is strong, but some exceptions arose. First group of three would have meant two consecutive jumps, which would devalue the low intensity of the section, and the slider here would be its own separate object if not in a group of three which I wanted to avoid. Overall, I was, I think, more satisfied with the stacking stuff because it was easier to cleanly arrange things. This pattern was a basic ascending staircase of sorts, created through some simple copy pasting and a lot of eyeballing. Simple pattern for the simplest part of the music. Doing like any complex slider patterns or irregular jumps would be kind of out of place in my opinion. Oh, and it's also worth noting that the visual spacing for this section got a bit tighter. This is partially because my space is limited while utilizing screen regions to represent music, but also because the song is different enough to support noticeable changes in visual style. Reaching the end of the playfield here naturally forced me to switch the direction of my staircase. My next object was over here, though rhythm took a bit of tinkering. A reverse slider wasn't going to cut it because there was a stronger sound in the reverse compared to the head. A circle followed by a full beat long slider seemed much better. It let the start of the next vocal phrase feel more important with the previous beat unclicked. I skipped over it at the time, but 10 minutes prior to this, I established slider velocity for this section. It's really slow as you've already seen, and I intended it to gradually increase as time went on. The original timing point is at 0.3 times, while the one here is at 0.4. This minor change shows exactly where my mapping buildup really becomes noticeable, as the song's buildup does too. Following the slider is that perfectly linear placement I was talking about that escalates my staircase even more. Plus it's followed by a triple once I reach the far left, which drums noticeably emphasize even through the low pass filter. Also, the basic polygon here shouldn't need an explanation, I just found it to look nice while sticking to the staircase angles. These next few objects were modified soon after placement, but I'll let you know my thought process anyway. Circle 9 is relatively important, so keeping it as part of the continuous pattern felt wrong. Going across the polygon made it stand out more, which is also why I placed the next combo over here. A direct back and forth uses relatively high spacing, and makes it seem even more important than 9 by being the sharpest angle yet. 2, 3, and 4 were going to be just like the triple stack at the start of the section, but I instead separated 2 and 3 because things were building up. 2 deserved to be its own separate object, and mapping wise I made it noticeably less important than 9 and 1 because of spacing. Next is another SV increase for the pause and vocals, which I again did not stack and unrelatedly placed directly in line with the previous object. That made me realize I couldn't maintain the same staircase angles though, so instead of just forgetting about the directly aligned thing, I readjusted all prior objects. Nine was instead emphasized through the back and forth, and one alone received spacing emphasis. Sort of like the forte piano crescendo again, I lowered height with one and two so I could build up more, then placed five not in line with four because that just wouldn't work pattern wise. I really could have just done that from the get go, but I'm happy with the turnout here anyway. Serendipity, that's a fancy word for something unexpectedly good happening by chance. In mapping where everything's premeditated, that word shouldn't apply, but placing my next combo somehow worked better than it should have. I reversed the direction of my staircase, and because I knew I wanted to reach the peak of the playfield by the end of the measure, I placed the stacks they're used to with steadily increasing spacing. The live clicking here was just about as precise as I wanted it to be, so barely any adjustments were made to the placements. Only the next combo was moved slightly outwards, but not after changing the idea behind placements. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but there's an explosive crash on the third object here. 
which served as enough reasoning to break from the upward incline I used so far in this section. Spacing helped to express the change here, and the explosive sound itself was mapped with the slider to really stand out from everything else. Technically, there are important sounds everywhere in the measure, notably vocals on the slider tails, but I wanted that unique sound to stand out, so I gave less priority to those vocal sounds. This part of the song repeated twice. I copied and pasted my parallel pattern to effectively show that. Horizontal flip being one of my first thoughts shouldn't be surprised, though I did think about making everything parallel and starting both patterns from the top. Neither was as appealing to me though. Also unrelated, in case you didn't notice, I switched back to the usual size of visual spacing with the change here. Another musical pattern that should be familiar. The vocalist increases pitch with every white tick, and there's subtle triples leading to each one. This rhythm works well to show that, joint with large spacing to white ticks and increasing slider velocity, so that's exactly what I did. I began by realizing I hadn't set SV changes yet, so I added 0.1 times to the previous slider and 0.05 times to the white ticks thereafter. While doing so, I also arranged sliders in an obviously associated way. This began with curved sliders rather than straight ones because I didn't want to relate those parallel combos earlier, and each following slider received a 30 degree rotation or they would have if I had enough room. By the fourth slider, I realized my pattern would be off screen, causing me to rotate each slider by 45 degrees instead and blanket the sliders rather than stagger them out. Probably the most straightforward build up yet. Drums are stagnant, but everything in the background sort of whooshes up to a climax in the big white tick. Naturally, the rhythm I thought to show this was a bunch of circles. My initial pattern ideas didn't really express the buildup though. As you can see by these circles, I was trying to start my stream with pretty high spacing, leaving no room for an increase aside from an unjustified difficulty spike. What these weird mouse movements show is the next idea I had, a star stream. If that sounds stupid, it's because it is. I formed a pentagon through the polygon circles tool, reformatted it into a star, and added a circle at the center of each object. Looked cool, however it was definitely too difficult, so I started from scratch. A stream of 1-2 stacks? I guess it showed the build up better through spacing increases and movement towards the bottom of the screen to the top, but it was again too weird to play with the stop go motions that the map doesn't really prioritize. Trashed once again. From these other mouse motions, you can kind of interpret my next idea, something that looks like a tornado which immediately came across as overkill. Yeah, let's, let's get rid of that. The climax of a song is important. I wanted to make something that stands out and fits appropriately, which my fourth idea did well enough. Like a few minutes ago, I created a long slider and began tracing circles along it with gradually scaling spacing. My first one was unsuccessful because the slider went out of the grid, but the second turned out almost exactly how I wanted it. It was mostly a coincidence that my stream lasted one full rotation and that allowed me to select the whole section and to make the stream end directly in the middle of the playfield. The climax is supposed to stand out, and a common way to do that is with symmetry, the most recognizable type of object arrangement. While my map does use symmetry in some ways, none of it was straightforward symmetry with the game's window, which really pops out. If done at any other part of the song, this might feel weird, but this part being special makes it work. It also helps that rhythm here is so simple. All I needed was half beat circles, the first two of which were spaced highly because pitches were higher, and the second two being lower spacing for lower pitches. The last object was then placed on the first because they're the same pitch. Lowering playback speed is pretty useful if you have trouble hearing individual sounds. Early on as a mapper, I know it's hard to keep track of everything going on, so really, use this as much as needed. It's a lot better than giving rhythm wrong for sure. Anyway, we got a new rhythm here, 1 6th for the first time, which mapped as circles would be unpredictable and honestly just unfitting for the section that's supposed to be straightforward. I therefore went with a basic reversing slider, whose slider velocity was lowered to avoid an overlap and better fit the calmness here. Huge slider, yeah. I planned on doing something similar to YFBMP's difficulty again, however, a fast slider here would ruin contrast with the next section, so I instead chose a slow slider near the bottom. <sighs> okay, that felt like a good stopping point. I mapped up to the chorus, so I tested what I had in the map to see if anything was especially wrong. I'll let you just see what progress we've made. <laughs> 
four, mapping the chorus. Problem, remember that section I skipped a while back? The same sounds repeat very noticeably every four beats, then it switches for the next four beats and so on. Mapping wise, this is pretty boring since any variation ends up feeling off and I couldn't think of any patterns that fit so I skipped over it. The chorus is structured in the same way. No option of skipping around here though, I had to brute force my way through this and luckily I had some possibilities in mind. The music here prioritized half beat rhythms through vocals, so I wanted to show that through half beat clicking. A mix of one fourth siders and circles would be appropriate since either exclusively would be too sparse or too dense rhythmically. In my opinion, at least. To create this, I first marked the section of the chorus with this key eye checkmark thing, which isn't actually important, then set slider velocity to a decently high number, 1.5 times. With my beat snap divisor still on 1 6, I accidentally snapped it wrong, but realized I liked the size of that slider more, so I raised SV accordingly. Also, beginning with a fast slider seemed especially fitting because it contrasted directly with the slow slider before it. If I switched the circle and slider, the chorus would start out way less intense. Anyway, placing that circle was my next concern. Flowing directly from one was comfortable, but did I want this to be comfortable? Down here is extremely sharp movement, which I didn't go with either. Everything felt wrong, and that's because rotation was too continuous. I flipped the slider over to the other side here, so circular movement could be the opposite of the previous pattern. Maintaining the same kind of rotation, especially through different parts of the music, makes them feel unnecessarily connected and therefore odd in my mind movement felt more okay now, so I experimented with some further placements. Two was stacked beneath the previous object because this was the general area I wanted the object, and the next slider was rotated by 72 degrees. That number is really arbitrary alone, however in a grouping of five it makes a perfect star, which is really nice. There was no grouping of five here though, nor four, nor, nor three, it was just two, so unless you're accustomed to seeing 72 degree rotations, it was arbitrary. An arbitrary number I could remember at least, since I'd be using it a lot more. Being further away, visual connections aren't as easy to make, but strict visual connections like the map thus far weren't really what I was going for. This kind of movement was most important here, and being visually acceptable was good enough in this situation. Considering the song repeats itself, I chose to do some copy-pasting action as well. Objects here literally require the same movement twice in a row, and to visually spice things up, I added 10 degree rotations to each slider. I know what you might be thinking here. Going by normal slider flow concepts, this looks really uncomfortable to play, but knowing that it's literally moving back to the position you started from, and it's a 1 4th slider that you don't necessarily follow the body of, I think it works okay in this situation. Lucky for me, within all this repetition was one slight variation at the end of the measure, a note on the blue tick. If not for this, I'd have no easy way to transition into a different area of the playfield since I'd probably go with yet another slider underneath 4 otherwise. This blue tick rhythm let me do a tiny space triple that I blanketed with the previous objects to have some sort of clean association. The next measure sounded pretty much the same as the first, so I considered repeating the same rhythm and placement ideas. To do so, I copied and flipped the slider over here, moved everything down to the left, and formed a little triangle with a triple and a new combo. This pattern was the same as the previous, 72 degree rotations and all, but doing this would really limit the rest of the section. Without variation for two measures, it would be weird to switch things up on the third, so I'd again be repeating this, which is boring and it didn't even look that good in the first place. As a new idea, I decided to ramp up rhythm construction and use a 3 8 slider in place of a 1 4 one. This meant for a new style of gameplay that still emphasized parts of the song that I felt deserved it, while showing a difference between the measures. The circle afterwards followed the same spacing as previous 1 8 stuff, as you should have guessed, and the following copied and pasted sliders follow slightly different rules from that 72 degree rotation copy pasta stuff. Instead, I rotated consecutive objects by less strict amounts. The first one was 45 degrees because the initial 30 degrees I tested was kind of messy, the third was symmetrically flipped, and the fourth was another 45 to return. It's worth noting that rotation changed on each object, as opposed to the previous back and forth that encouraged fully circular flow. This is a concept I'll be building on for all the 3 8 slider patterns during the chorus. Like the last measure, this one also supported a transitionary triple, but this time I chose to make it spaced even higher. Because there's less aim requirements for this triple compared to this one, higher spacing isn't much harder and it helps express the strength of the next downbeat more. Speaking of, the next measure is almost a copy of the first. 72 degree rotation over here would be a straight up copy, but I felt sharper movement would work well here this time rather than one leading directly into two. This minor differentiation will be showing up a few more times as I continue mapping the chorus. 
So yeah, not much to explain. The slider down here follows visual spacing with nearby objects, and they're repeated like the first measure. The one thing I forgot was the tender view rotations for the second combo, and I continued to forget for the rest of the chorus while still being satisfied, so I ended up reverting the initial tender view rotations later. But regardless, at the end of the measure, I added the triple as usual, which in this case didn't form a blanket because the angle would have been a bit too wide for what I was going for. It still did end up being a triangle though, leading into something that looks wrong. The overlap could have been avoided with a different type of placement, but I prioritized movement over anything here. I wanted a rotational flow break followed by a straight line for the repeated triple. And this triple is deservingly differentiated from the leading in one through both shape, spacing, and movement style. Sticking with the copy paste chorus theme, I could have done this. One of my other maps does the same thing, however the focus of it was a reading challenge. That's not so much the case here, which is why I ended up flipping every other triple around and manually offsetting them. They're easier to interpret this way. You also probably noticed I added a slider on the last one. I didn't want to do another instance of clickable 1 4th lead in because it would blend too much with my repeated triples, making the next best option a 1 4th slider. Slider velocity was noticeably lower on this one though because I also didn't want it to blend in with the following 1 4th slider. Low SV and different shape make the impact of 1 more important, just like the start of the chorus. I shouldn't need to describe what's going on for the next four measures. They're musically the same as the first four, and therefore the same conceptually in my map. It starts with one fourth siders that somewhat lead into each other with 72 degree rotations. Associations with the other objects aren't strict. The triple at the end overlaps a previous slider at the same 45 degree offset I've used elsewhere in the map. Next comes the 3 8 section. It isn't led into by a perfect triangle, but rather a wider angle that looks equally okay in my opinion. 3 8 sliders, again, don't follow any strict rules other than copy, paste, and rotate each one by recognizable amounts. The second is flipped, the third is rotated by negative 90 degrees, the fourth is a copy of the first. It's also worth mentioning that there is not a direction change on each slider this time. Reasons will be explained soon, just keep in mind the progression from constant direction change to partial direction change. Before moving on to the next measure, I gave the map a short test and noticed a star rating of 4.4. I felt like it was much lower earlier and that the triple repetition here was acting as too much of a difficulty spike, so I lowered spacing to below the usual visual spacing. It still expressed the music by being different, but with a 0.2 star rating lower. Anyway, next measure, I got a lead in with a triple and I didn't set myself up for it well. I already had moved the entire group of objects down to compensate for the upper border and now there's no room for a flowy triple like last time. This kind of triple could work, but it's harder to play than I'd like and it leaves absolutely no options for sharply angled 1 4th slider stuff afterwards. That's what was being attempted here. Placing 5 underneath 3 worked a lot better though. Movement was smooth and there were far more options for placing the next object. People often consider overlaps ugly, but if done with some clear intentions like this one being directly underneath the middle of the slider body, it looks fine in my opinion. So we got more 72 degree rotation sliders, again with the ones after 3 8 sliders being backwards movement rather than forwards, and another triple to round it out. I had trouble finding where to place this triple though. It had to lead into one of those linear things we talked about earlier and I tried to make it work with overlaps without success. I eventually chose to blanket 5 and not overlap stuff despite being inconsistent with the previous triples. If anything I should go back and fix this but I didn't find it too serious at the time. Fixing it would be pretty hard now though considering the way it connects to the following objects. With a few minor adjustments I got the third triple to line up with the center of the playfield. These repeated triples are slightly different from those last ones. Instead of repeating four times, they repeat three times, and the last empty bit here is two loud snare drums plus new vocal syllables. For this special bit to feel special, I went with that standout symmetry thing from earlier. If it's not treated as something new here, it'll at least be associated with the previous special part of the song and work to express this one. As for placement specifics, one is vertically symmetrical with nine because a stack would be wrongly associated with the previous stacks. Two is under nine because it's also an important sound, and it's got a lower slider velocity to again make the upcoming slider velocity more impactful. Comboing is also used to show a different part of the music here, which is why this is a combo of nine rather than the usual six. Now we're into the second half of the ki, part of which is the same as what we just gone over, and part of which is special. Starting with the non-special part, there's nothing especially different music-wise. However, because the chorus is building up to something, having progression of some sort is important in my opinion. Instead of handling these 1-4 sliders with 72 degree angles, 
I use 90 degree angles, big deal I know. The first of these sliders were placed on the right side going counterclockwise to balance what was just played prior, upper left clockwise movement. Balancing screen region and rotation is something you've been seeing a lot without me explicitly saying it, but I almost always try to group objects away from their previous positions unless I'm going for compact stuff, makes it not feel less crowded that way. So then I placed another blanketed triple thing and continued on with 3-8 sliders. While doing so, I thought about making difficulty progression a bit clearer, ultimately not choosing to do so in the end. That would have been too much. More simple progression with my course of action. For the 3 8 sliders this run, I used entirely one direction of rotation, spinning each one 90 degrees. The map went from constant switching, to partial switching, to no switching, and then I'll advance one more time in the special section. Subtle things like this make repetitive maps slightly more interesting to think about from my point of view, so I like doing this stuff. The following triple was going to be like the overlapping one earlier, however a lack of playfield space made me reconsider and do something simpler, placing 5 right in the center of the square pattern and placing the next object on top of a previous one. This kept the same higher spacing thing that triples after 3 8 sliders have been using while looking okay I think, it's a recognizable pattern. A few more 90 degree 1 4 sliders after this, moving backwards from the body as expected, another triangle blanket triple thing, uh, finally the linear triple stuff we've seen a couple times already. Except not. Again, I was trying to make things slightly different in the second half of the KI, so this is no longer a straight line. Hopefully, at least that will get across to some people in the map, unlike the minor angle changes and rotation. Did you catch my mistake? I'm still not sure why it happened, but I accidentally flipped the direction of the last triple, making for this kind of movement. This was against my intentions. I wanted this sort of thing, but I ended up mapping with this for the end position of my triples. Like the chorus halfway point, there were only three triples to map here followed by two drums, so I used the same circle and lowest v 1 fourth slider layout as earlier. Game window symmetry could have worked, if not for my mistake. I needed to flip these around after adjusting my triples, and that caused a nasty overlap, so I redesigned the whole pattern instead. Diagonal symmetry, I kept it for a while, but it looked more random than anything, leading me to use smaller scale symmetry within the combo instead. The special part. Mm -hmm. I copied that 4 times SV multiplier I created at the beginning and added a 2.4 times green line here, showing that this part was definitely the most intense part of the map. As for objects, I plan on making this just double the density of the previous section, since it feels like twice as many vocals while still covering only white and red ticks. So that meant constant repeated 1 4 sliders here, constant 3 8 sliders here, constant 1 4 sliders again here, and even fancier stuff at the end. We'll get there. So 1 4 sliders. I went with 72 degree rotations again, messed around with a few placements, and finally got one I generally liked. At which point I remembered those 10 degree rotations at the very beginning of the chorus. I was happy with the direct overlaps elsewhere, so I removed those oddities and used the idea for this special part instead. Copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, then rotate, 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 rotate. It came out decent in the end, aside from this part. It looks like I'm trying to lead Sider 1's body directly into the body of 2. This honestly just reminds me of new mapper maps, so I moved things around a bit and avoided that misinterpretation. 3 8 sliders followed a similar model. This one was placed in a triangle with the last two sliders, and it was paired with a symmetrical clone. I rotated the copy by 10 degrees, and then copied and pasted both of them by 20 degrees repeatedly, coming up with this in the end. This was the final progression of that rotation thing, moving in only one direction but in a much sharper way. The third measure did what you'd expect. The base 1 4 sliders were rotated by 90 degrees this time, and each consecutive slider was rotated by 10 more degrees. Initially this was done in a sort of mirrored fashion, but after looking at it for a while I thought it was pretty ugly, so I arbitrarily moved things down. Genius, I know. New rhythm here. It's subtle, but there's a 1 8 triple right around here in the hi-hats. Usually this wouldn't be worth mapping, but at the climax of the chorus, it only makes sense to go as extreme with mapping as the song allows. This slightly angled triple thing should be familiar, however, I didn't know how to expand on it. Making a linear triple down here, neatly blanketing the last slider, then rotating repetitions worked well for me though. Why not 4 copy pastes? Because like earlier, the triple only repeated 3 times, and there were only 2 loud drums on the last beat. I tried mixing this up by copying a conveniently placed 1 8 triple, yeah sure, and knew immediately that it wasn't going to be playable. It's a good thing I deleted that because the song doesn't actually have a triple in the last beat anyway. That's why I went with only circles, pointing out for the middle path of my triangle. <sighs> so yeah, the chorus is finally done. After this, I made a few adjustments to my poorly planned spacing of this pattern, and mapped the outro. Part 5. Mapping the Outro 
Just to reiterate, contrast is important. I just mapped the hardest part of the song, this climax with space circle spam. So using relatively low intensity rhythm, slider velocity, and spacing could express how much calmer the next section was. I could have used a one half slider plus a circle on the end and done this sort of thing, but a three fourth slider and an overlap circle showed contrast a lot more effectively. It was a lot easier and therefore more contrasting. When placing 2 and 3, I had a few options. At first I wanted to stack, but I hadn't used enough stacks elsewhere in the map for gameplay to be all that clear. I could have used space stuff, but contrast again. That's why I ended up going with this 1 4th overlap spacing I've used throughout the map. Anyone can figure out the rhythm after getting this far. Just so we're all on the same page, the main thing I was focusing on here was the vocals. These two beats repeat, which is why I copied, pasted, and flipped these objects, while the next two beats were a pitch increase of half-beat vocals. At the end here, there weren't any vocals, but there were some standout sounds that clearly served to stand in place of the melody. These parts of the song were what I planned on focusing on while mapping the whole outro. So how I did that, as I already said, this began with 3 4 sliders in the first measure, and when vocals became more frequent in the second measure, I mapped them with higher rhythm density. I brought back these 1 4 jumps and paired them with consecutive 1 4 sliders, which I thought would help to show the vocal buildup. After some reconsideration, they seemed too intense though, so I ended up repeating the 1 half slider anyway. Triangle here looks good, but plays kinda terribly. The upwards and sideways motion for a 1 4 jump makes me uncomfortable as described at the very beginning of this. I recreated the triangle with the following object instead, and expanded on it with a second and eventually third triangle. I'm sorta of glossing over a lot of choices here because I ended up redoing some of it. These sliders for one got readjusted to look like this. Nothing was especially wrong with the original, but I thought continuous movement would be more appropriate after the hard part rather than some weird, less natural movement. Again, contrast stuff. I then decided to use a new pattern for this build-up thing that attached each slider through overlaps. I felt like this attached chain thing could better show the increase in pitches rather than separated objects, and it was more interesting than the pattern I used elsewhere in the song. Additionally, it had some fancy rotation stuff thanks to the blanket placement up here that plays a bigger role later in the outro. How to map this new instrument was kind of concerning at this point. Higher slider velocity was appropriate, though being spaced away didn't really feel right and I didn't have enough room to do so anyway. Making this into a triangle and doing some stack stuff worked well though, and along with unique slider shapes for this instrument specifically, I think I covered it pretty well. These red anchor sliders are great for really strong sounds in my opinion because of how aggressive they look. Being a strong part of the song, I also let myself use pretty high 1 4 spacing at the end of it. 4 was stacked under the tail of 2 at that regular offset, and the new combo was visually spaced to connect 3 and 4. Following that were two more copy pasted 3 4 sliders, same logic as the earlier ones with visual spacing connectors. vocals right here were slightly different than earlier. Instead of being only half beat rhythms, there was a fourth beat one second and it's worth differentiating. To do so, I started with a one fourth slider. A one half slider would feel too similar to the one earlier despite being rhythmically correct. On the vocals, I made three clickable objects. Stacking them as I attempted wasn't intense enough for this kind of buildup. I used space one fourth in the last buildup, therefore it seemed appropriate to use space one fourth this time too, again with those standardized overlaps. Slider shapes were still essentially the same as the last buildup, being clipped versions of each other. For that unique instrument part, I tried to recreate the same thing at a 90 degree angle, but it ended up being kinda weird. These like hook sort of motions work well when going horizontally, but not vertically. Rotating 3 again and connecting it near the bottom worked well enough though, so I just stuck with that. Following this was another circle to help lead into the downbeat. My gut reaction told me to place this directly in line with the body of 3, then I remembered I should be using higher spacing for consistency with the last one, and I adjusted it to over here. Looks like a random place, yet it was almost exactly where I wanted it, blanketing a new 3 4 slider that links the orange and pink combos together. Next came two more copies of the 3 4 slider stuff, the second of which connected to the first with this irrelevant triangle, then SV changes. This buildup is longer than the last, meaning more slider velocity increases and more sliders in this overlapping chain. I copied and pasted the initial buildup to the first, placed it near the right side so I can expand leftwards, then did that expansion by manually repeating the pattern. The last beat has two vocals instead of one however, leading me to use a different rhythm, a rhythm where both vocals are clicked, which thus far has usually been a circle and a 1 fourth slider. No exception here, I'm going to just continue the pattern visually while using the same rhythm. Think back to part 3, the low pass filter part. This rhythm played there too, which you can see here. You'd think that copying the same idea there would be good, 
and you'd be wrong. At least in the context of the map. I started off by recreating something like that with back and forth stuff, but thought it didn't really stand out the way I wanted it to. In the other section, spacing worked well because everything around it was stacked. In this section though, a stack would stand out appropriately and make the movement on the weird important slider more prominent. So that's what I did. Aggressive random cross slider symmetry connected to the last object, and it was symmetrically placed to make the finale of the song stand out. Symmetrical jumps also serve to do the same thing here, looking suspiciously similar to another one of my map's finales. Makes sense though, the objects away from the center represent one instrument, and those in the center represent another, while the climax is at the very top. Using only jumps as opposed to the usual 1-4 rhythm makes this section stand out as well. That's why after the climax, I go back to 1 4 rhythm, albeit in the calmest way possible. I lowered slider velocity for my symmetrical 1 4 slider and stacked the next couple objects in the center. This is the real conclusion to the song, which is basically a conversion of what you just heard. I mapped it in nearly the exact same way, just without high spacing or the aggressive slider shapes. Don't think I need to elaborate on that. So. We're done. Yeah, we finally made it to the end of the song. You know how to map. Congratulations, congratulations. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next part six. Mapping the section I skipped earlier. Right, right, right. I was stuck last time I tried mapping this section, but after going through the chorus, I knew exactly what I could do. Both sections prioritize white and red ticks in the same repetitive way, so I could design this section as a baby version of the chorus. That meant beginning with 1-4 sliders followed by circles, just with lower slider velocity, and pasting the second sliders at near arbitrary 72 degree angles. Rather than making it the exact same but dumbed down, I decided to switch the head and tail positions of sliders throughout this section. That meant each slider would encourage this sort of back and forth movement instead of circular movement. I also chose to separate each grouping this time instead of copying and pasting in the same location. That extra level of repetitive stuff would remain exclusive to the chorus. For the second measure of this section, I also changed some stuff. I went with 1 half sliders instead of 3 eighths sliders. 3 eighths sliders are a bit more extreme than what I wanted this section to be. Like, they fit well with the record scratching stuff right before this, but not an ordinary section. Especially when they're this close together. You know, contrast. They wouldn't have enough contrast. Only 1 half sliders would be too low density though, so I included a 1 fourth slider after each one as well. I could have done a common pattern like this, but because the rest of the map handles 1 fourth jumps onto important sounds rather than onto blue ticks, this would be logically kind of off. 1 fourth jumps that introduced the overlapping gimmick that comes later was my final decision, and so I placed a whole combo accordingly. The only non-spaced 1 fourth was this one, which acted the same as the triple earlier. Because spaced triples are way harder to play than single spaced notes, I chose to leave them for the chorus, and this instance of 1 fourth is technically acting as a triple here, just after a slider end. But yeah, I made another measure of 1 fourth sliders going back and forth, which I shouldn't need to explain for a tenth time now, and that was followed by something reminiscent of the triple section in the chorus. My goal with this was to still have space 1 4th, but to be a bit simpler than the overlapping triples earlier. These were too hard for the section, sliders were too easy, back and forth stuff though, a decent choice. They were easy to read and a good mid-level of difficulty. Concluding this triple section was an out of left field anime girl noise, which definitely deserved its own fancy emphasis through map design. Slider velocity could show that well, so I made two consecutive 1 4th sliders for the ending. The first was a sort of slider velocity reference point after playing only circles, while the second was faster to show anime, the emphasis of anime. Given consistency, I also needed to place a 1 4th slider in the next section, so I arranged these three sliders in a triangle pattern. Two 40 degree rotations work well for that, and my next place object made this like super tight movement. It's cool. Trust me, it's cool. The next three measures were repeating exactly what I talked about earlier. I think we're deep enough in this set I can just vaguely describe what's going on and you'll get what I mean. One fourth sliders followed by circles, 72 degree angles, one half sliders plus one fourth jumps, more one fourth slider circle stuff, and finally, the last unique part of the music. Well, partially unique. It's very similar to that regressive stream I did earlier with the oriental sound samples. This time though, there's a few odd drum samples that deserve their own emphasis, specifically a 1 8 drum roll that could be mapped as a reverse slider in the middle of the stream. Copying and pasting that later stream could have worked, and I did try it, 
It was kind of lame though. The song here was more lively, so I could do something more engaging with my mapping than just a descending stream. I went back to one of my earlier stream ideas, a little spiral, which because of the 1 8 slider, didn't look like a complete mess. It's like the slider body shows that this curves into infinity, even though it doesn't really. The last five notes of the stream dropped the oriental sounds and there were only drums, so I chose to separate them into their own pattern as well. Five circles makes me instantly think pentagon, so at the point of desperation for finishing this map, I created one of the smaller spacing than my spiral and placed it down here. A few minor movements for a chunk of objects later and things connected. I was pretty lucky that this transition didn't completely ruin my mapping since they weren't mapped chronologically. And uh, that's it. No easy way to transition here since the end of the map is a fourth of the way through the song, but we are legitimately done here. For the most part, we've discussed the decisions behind everything in this map, excluding hit sounds and some more repetitive stuff that would apply to practically every other object. So if you watched the whole way through and are curious about how the map turned out, have fun. Congratulations to you for actually making it this far. I expect most people won't be able to stand how repetitive mapping can be when explained like this. There's way too much of this happens because of this, and I did this at first, but it sucked, so I did this instead, and it's the same sort of formula. Even though it is not entertaining at all, making a video in this style is something I've wanted to do since starting this channel, and now that I've got enough experience with video creation, I'm able to do it within my weekly schedule. That's kind of how mapping works too. You're slow at first and your thoughts aren't as organized, but once you do it for a while, you can make something good in a decent amount of time. Practice is essential to mapping because there's so much to consider with every object. It's overwhelming to think about it all at first, but once you get accustomed to each design aspect, you'll be able to map however you want. So yeah, one final disclaimer, this has been one mapping perspective. There's no right or wrong in how I made choices and everyone's got their own preferences. Either way though, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching slash listening, and I'll see you next week.